we'll we'll see and we'll see when OpenSUSE is going to make it available because lately uh, they've been a bit uh, slow on package updates but eh, it is what it is <laughs> oh is that what you're running right now <laughs> yeah uh, OpenSUSE is my main uh... so I run OpenSUSE Tumbleweed on my desktop mm -hmm. and on my uh, like a mini PC for my TV mm -hmm. I run Bazite on my Steam Deck, and we can get into the reasons why I'm running Bazite instead of SteamOS. It's a long discussion. Actually, no, long yeah, story for sure. I'd love to hear yeah. about that. Yeah. Long story short, full description. I really think as a mobile device, like the Steam Deck is a fantastic device, but it's a mobile device. If you don't have full disk encryption and you're moving it around, uh, you're kind of putting yourself at risk. And SteamOS doesn't have built-in support for booting onto uh, like a Lux protected partition. Uh, Bassite does, and it's working fantastically. What is that uh, that backplate uh, you have on it? Is that like a? It's like. Th so that's an extreme rate, uh, transparent backplate for the Ooh. original LCD, uh, the original LCD uh, Steam Deck, mm -hmm. but it also works on the OLED model. Uh, okay. Does still looks great on the original LCD model though, uh, but yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know you could get custom backplates for it. You can, uh, and it's it. It's a small and super easy customization you can you can do on your Steam Deck to make it look uh, personalized. Mm -hmm. So I've, I'm running a red backplate on mine. My partner is running a green backplate on hers, and yeah, they they're fantastic. Uh, oh. GS Ox also releases like also has a series of black plates for uh, for the uh, for the Steam Deck. Mm -hmm. They made holes for the fan. Which, I mean, there's some engineer to look at the terminal design of the original, like the Steam Deck when they designed it. They didn't put holes there, so I don't see why having additional speed holes for your fan would make it any cooler. Uh, I mean, they, they're still great quality, though, and you can still, you can still buy them. But yeah, it's, it's a really easy mod to do mm -hmm. uh, compared to uh, just do a full shell replacement for the Steam Deck, which then you got to unglue the screen and do a whole bunch of things. Right, right. Um, hmm. So yeah, um, I've also done other mods on my Steam Deck. So I replaced the buttons. Uh, I forget the name of the. I think it's Extreme Rate again that does like clicky buttons uh, for the Steam Deck. So I got clicky buttons on my OLED model. Clicky for what? The face buttons. So for the for the uh, yeah the uh, X Y B buttons as well as the uh, the D pad. Oh. I mostly wanted a D pad. I play a lot of like retro. I play a lot of like Kaizo Mario ROM hacks. <laughs> uh, so I the D pad on the Steam Deck is very mushy. Uh, which I mean it's very functional for a lot of games, but if you're doing precision games with a D pad, it's kind of it, it, yeah yeah it can be improved. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, so having clicky buttons uh, makes it way better. So I've got that. Uh, the this LCD deck that was an original launch LCD. Uh, which I gave to my partner. The battery had uh, became a spicy pillow, so that had to be replaced. That was an issue with the original VDL batteries. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want to identify if you have a VDL battery, open it up. If it's vertical text instead of horizontal, it's a VDL battery. You can also use a bad info U power to see the uh, uh, whichever. So I replaced the battery on that, and the fan started clicking as well. So I just replaced the fan actually two days ago on this one. Uh, so yeah. Pre wow. Pretty, pretty fantastic devices, and oh. it's impressive how Valve managed to make a user-friendly, and I'm not saying Linux is not user-friendly, but let's say normie-friendly mm -hmm. uh, Linux device. For a lot of people, they wouldn't even know uh, they're running Linux. Oh yeah, 99% uh, of the time, you're in Steam Big Picture mode. Yeah, exactly, and 88% of the games, and I'm not making up that number. I'm just looking at the top 1,000 uh, games. Oh, is it actually 88%? Uh, that are rated by, yeah, from Proton DB, 88% are gold Jeez. or platinum rated. A lot of games run fine on SteamOS. The problematic games are mostly multiplayer titles, and they're mostly shooters with anti cheat. Maybe Leagues of Le League of Legends is one that people would want to play on the Steam Deck and can't on SteamOS. But there's there's all games just work fine and it's such a fantastic experience when to go when you're on the go mm -hmm. you're sitting in a plane for 16 hours do you really want to see the same tired movies that they're showing <laughs> in the in-plane entertainment system nah just get a steam deck like have 
and you've got like a nice 16 hour play session in front of you if you can't sleep uh so yeah it's 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 really it really is a fantastic device mm -hmm. well that takes us into like the the main thing i want to talk about I don't even know where to start with this because there's like a there's a bunch of different directions we can go. I think the first place to go to though is all the way back to when Valve first started trying to do this Linux gaming thing when they announced the Steam machines as their own standalone thing. Now for anyone who doesn't know the history of Linux gaming, this is about 4 5 years before uh, Proton became a thing, something like that. So, yeah. back then, back uh, 2013 was the Steam Machines, I'm pretty sure. And then, like, 20, 2018 or something was Proton. So, Steam Machine was released in 2015, according to Wikipedia. Uh, okay. Am I, where did I get 2013 from? <laughs> I don't know. According to Wikipedia, I could be wrong, though. But I think they announced it. Uh, we play uh, during the. Okay, there were articles that came out in 2013, but it might have been like a pre-release thing at that point. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was released on November 10, 2015, and mm -hmm. Proton, uh, the very first version, the initial release was in 2018. So it predates Proton by three years. Yeah. Um, the Steam Machine was a horrible idea. <laughs> I, I, I think it would have gone very differently if the early versions of Proton would have been available. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it was necessarily a horrible idea. It was just horrible timing for sure, it. Sure, yeah. The, the infrastructure for Linux gaming wasn't there yet. Uh, at least for w running win like the most, most games, right? The, window, the, the, Windows, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Windows games. Uh, yeah, it was a machine before its time. Yeah, I, I think... Well, even, even so, I think even if they did have Proton available, early Proton, the list was like... 50 or so games. A lot more games worked. It's just they hadn't tested them yet. Mm -hmm. Things probably would have gone differently. It wouldn't have been as much of a failure. But I don't think we would be... I don't think we would have seen... Like, this big uptick in Linux gaming like we did with the Steam Deck. Like, the Steam Deck... It had given Proton a good couple of years to get good. By... Like, when people forget before the Steam Deck came out. Most things pretty much already work. It's gotten a lot better since the Steam Deck, but it wasn't like it was bad before. I was only gaming on Linux at that point. The Steam Deck came out, it got even better. But, I don't know. I, I, I think the Steam Machines, if they... Well, the, the problem with Steam Machines is they thought they could get people to port games. That's, that's it, the issue they had. It was also a tougher sell when people was not, were not exposed to... Linux gaming in general because okay think about it you're a consumer in 2015 you want to buy a, a steam machine is a living room device mm -hmm. so you want to buy a computer for you want to buy a gaming machine for your for your for your for your living room would you buy a PlayStation or an Xbox which has a series of established titles made from that is sold by a vendor you recognize or buy something from Valve mm -hmm. which you as a living room gamer would not necessarily recognize because you're not a PC. You're not a PC gamer. Mm -hmm. Would you buy a machine that's running, that's that's running something in a library of games, and it says it's a very limited number of games that do work. It's only Linux. It was only, I think, Linux compatible games. Yes. Or, yes. So y well, would it was you running really Debian, that so you the... could like do play on Linux, but like, I yeah. think I don't. Was Lutris available back then? I know Play on Linux was a lot more popular back then. I think Lutris was available, though. It was just very early on. <clears throat> um, but, like, you wouldn't know about these things if you weren't already a Linux gamer. So, it, it, had, it was, like, a device made without a market. So, the PC gamers, they yeah. had a PC. The console gamers, they had a console. Didn't really... They didn't have a Valve, um, a, a Steam, like, a library. Account. And yep. then the Linux gamers, they didn't exist yet. But the ones that did they already were running Linux and didn't really have any reason to buy this machine. Yeah, and peop and if you would buy a living room machine, you would want a plug-and-play device, which didn't require any fiddling or setup, mm -hmm. which the Steam <clears throat> machine wasn't, let's mm -hmm. be honest. It was the first step towards getting there, but it was before its time. 